Welcome back to the farm in Tarlin with Toon and Lee. And today it's Saturday morning. Toon's just going to go into town uh, to the local market with her mum and Kai Muk. But before she goes off, she's got to help Lee, hasn't she? So today we're going to rebuild our compost shower for the hot water. And uh, it's our phase two or our mark two. It's new and improved. So we're going to show you once we've got all the hyacinth back to the house, uh, how we've set it up. We've made a few tweaks. But before we do that, we've got loads of hyacinth to load up on a trusty Ben-Hur chariot. Well, as often is the case on a Saturday morning, guys, she's left me yet again. <laughs> uh, she's not getting out of the work. I don't think so, anyway. Um, right, okay, so we've done two trips of getting the hyacinth. I dragged them out, uh, I would say, about four or five days ago while I was out with the goats on pasture. I will go and get some more out soon while, while Toon's away. But what I want to do is, is use what we've got first. We're combining it with the, the goat muck that's uh, helped inoculate the biochar. Uh, and I've got a few bits and bobs of brown stuff as well. So we've got the greens, the browns, uh, the, the biochar, and then uh, the, the manure as well. So it's a really good mix. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get hold of the cassava skins this time around. Uh, it's just that we need to get it in a, a big bulk load in one go. And it's, I, I wouldn't say it's expensive, but when you're buying a, a lot in one go, uh, then, it, then it adds up a bit. So we're going to bulk it out mainly with the hyacinth, as long as it doesn't go wet sloppy and um, anaerobic uh, we don't want that situation arising because it, then it will start stinking and obviously with it being a hot shower system it's quite close to the house as you can see i've been stockpiling my goat muck totally cleared out the underneath the goat house a couple of days ago left it all here i know you might think it's howling but it doesn't smell anything because there's a lot of biochar in here so this is quite coarse stuff the stuff that we're actually selling now, uh, upcoming video guys, uh, that is sifted and it's a very, very fine grade. Nothing, nothing like this. Here's my browns. Uh, one full basket per layer, I reckon. Um, there's nothing really bigger than this. And if it doesn't break down in time, then uh, it'll just get recycled, used as a top mulch. No problem at all. A few trimmings from the papaya trees. Onto the system itself, it's the phase two of our hot shower project. And I can't take any credit for this, Toon's done all the work. This is the old pipe work from our phase one, which was just over 20 meters. Uh, worked fine, but we've uprated guys. We've got a brand new roll, 100 meter hose pipe. And Toon has changed the attachments this end. She did this about four or five days ago. Uh, the reason we haven't done the compost pile since then is because we wanted to check for leaks. Previously on the phase one, uh, we had one blockage. Uh, can't really say it was anything to do with this system. There was a little bit of swarf that was in the blue pipes that we'd cut. And when we opened the valve and started using it, it flushed it through and it just created, it clogged up the back of the shower head. So the system itself was fine, uh, right up until the point that uh, the water temperature started tailing off, I would say about six months it really needed replacing the the, the, the compost pile um or or certainly recharging with new with new uh, greens you know for the nitrogen to get the heat going again uh, but i wanted to um create or, or or put a load of compost into my growing areas which will come in another video so i had it all earmarked what the what what the use for the compost was uh and you know that that was one of the main reasons that we did it not just to have hot water but to create a lot of compost in one go what has become evident though uh, for the first four or five days that we used the the shower without any compost any organic matter on top of it was there was a slight increase in temperature uh, when we were having showers at night but not a lot and th this was all left exposed so you know as been suggested putting hose pipe on on the roof 
I, I know, you know, guys, it wouldn't it wouldn't create compost for us, so it's not really viable for us. Um, but leaving it at ground level, and then from mid afternoon onwards, we get the sun this side, so it gets a lot of solar gain. Uh, but it wasn't very hot, and it's because we shower quite late at night. So whatever temperature is built up in here during the day, by the time we come to have our showers, we basically shower just before bedtime, uh, it was cold again. Well, not, not icy cold, which it has been in these cold evenings. We forecast 15 later this week. Um, but, you know, certainly too cold for us to shower comfortably. So the stuff that you can see in here is left over from our previous compost pile and it has dried out considerably because it's just been left in full sun uh, but uh, it's not been sieved or anything like that it's just been scraped up uh, the remnants um, off the floor and, and piled this way the re there's two reasons why I've, I've, I've used this as I have one is because it's it's not going to compost down again well it, it might do a little bit I suppose as you can see there's a little bit of organic matter in there uh, but it's pretty pretty solid so uh, what I don't want is too much movement as things rot down around the pipe work you know if things start collapsing then there's a chance that the pipe might get squashed it didn't happen on the previous one but we're going bigger this time the pile is going to be bigger uh, so that's the first reason the second one is all my microbes my IMOs my indigenous microorganisms so uh, from my Korean natural farming learnings uh, that was all sort of added to our previous compost pile. All the other good bits and bobs that were in there as well as the IMO will be contained in the biochar. Uh, so when you put your new compost additives on there like your hyacinth and your muck and stuff like that um, we're already going it's a starter so it'll kick start your, your compost pile a little bit a little bit quicker than if you just made a compost pile from new and didn't add this if you didn't have this sort of thing to add you could just have a pea in there no problem at all just to get it going if you never looked into korean natural farming it's a real eye-opener guys i highly recommend it you know the, the two things that i've i've uh, i really really am impressed with is is obviously the biochar you know i'm a big advocate for that uh, but combining it with with uh, imos that sort of stuff is it's uh, it's next level stuff, I reckon. It's another silver tip bullet in your armory. Time to get busy then. I'm just going to layer it the same as I did. Layer of hyacinth, a layer of biochar with the manure, a layer of browns, and then another layer of hyacinth. And keep going until I'm, I've ran out. I reckon I'll only get two layers uh, because we're going to have a, it's going to be a really big diameter this time. And hyacinth breaks down quite quickly. Again, we want loads of heat, so lots of greens in there, and it should be good to go. So I reckon if I get one, maybe two layers done with that, once it's all gone, I'm then gonna. So if I can get, so if I can get at least one, maybe two full layers of everything in there, I'm then gonna release the herd. Hopefully, I say hopefully because I'm on my own uh, over there. If I can push them that way, I can then get back into the little uh, drainage canal and hoik out a load more hyacinth. And once the missus comes back, she can help me with Ben her chariot, ferry it back over here again. So uh, yeah, be all good. Hopefully by then we can work together and get the goats round the back of Goat Island, round the back of the lake, and uh, and then we can really get going and get this pile mahoosive. First layer done. There's a few reasons why I like using hyacinth so much. Uh, one, because it grows like crazy, <laughs> so we never run out of it. But also it's what uh, what it grows in. So when the water level starts dropping in our little irrigation canal, the root system starts to take hold in the sediment below. I mean, the sediment itself is good for, good for your soil, um, but it's all the, the, the nutrition that's generated from that into the plant. So you're getting nutrition in the roots that's collected in the root system and you're getting the goodness from the plant itself. There's also quite a good water content in there. The other good thing is hyacinth is known to remove a lot of toxicity 
out of water systems. So any water that comes on our land from elsewhere, like runoff, um, then ooh, then it will help to, to clear the water. Uh, it's good. It's uh, totally renewable. It's it's very invasive. That's the only downfall. Uh, but if you keep on top of it, which I know doesn't look like we do, but you know at the, at the right time of year, then we take out absolutely loads of it. This time it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a whole new scale. It looks a lot behind me. I wanted more, ideally, um, to to come out further, a bigger diameter. That'll have to wait till Toon comes back. So I've made it thick enough in the middle and then I've just worked my way out uh, and now I can put my browns on. Not enough. Brown layer complete. Didn't take very long, just two bamboo baskets full is enough. Uh, don't be concerned guys, you might be thinking, oh bloody hell Lee, your, your browns will never break down. But, uh, I mean that looks quite big for a compost pile in, in my opinion. But it just, everything breaks down so quick out here. And it, I, I, I bet you it won't be there in six or seven months time. These browns are just a mixture of the leukina left over from the goats that isn't big enough to burn and make our biochar and a lot of uh, what we call hamata grass, I think is the, the word for it, which has dried off and become a bit of a, a straw now, and olga tin seeds. Uh, some of it's quite, quite dark because we've got swept up, it's been swept up where all the biochar is under their feeding area as well. I'm quite happy that we're doing the compost pile now because the browns pile was getting quite big. In the previous video, I wasn't too sure what I'd end up using it for, whether I was just gonna make a, a rough mulch uh, around the, the, the bottom of the trees, which is still very, very beneficial, obviously, uh, but there's a lot of leukina seed in here, and maybe think, well, Lee, you've put, you put flipping leukina seed in your compost when, you've, when you spread that everywhere. This is gonna get so hot because we've gone really heavy on the greens, the seeds are just gonna get cooked straight away. Um, if it's so hot that it kills the microorganisms, I'm not too concerned with that because I'll be adding more IMO um, from the tanks anyway. So it's, you know, it's got all the goodness in the liquid there and they'll be reintroduced. So yeah, I, I'm sure it won't kill everything that's locked away in the, the little nuggets of biochar and the other compost from the other pile. Um, but you know, if there is loss, then it's easily replaced with IMO. Onto my favorite layer the biocharged manure. Uh, there'll be a lot of urine in here as well. Obviously it's not swimming in it, it's dried up. Very, very porous, your biochar as most of you know. So uh, it, it just does not smell whatsoever. The only time this smells is if it doesn't get uh, exposed to a bit of sun and a bit of wind, um, then yeah, it, it can start to pool a little bit and then you may get some ammonia given off. But you can see it's the, the goats have done a great job in starting to break this up uh, but that that's probably getting somewhere near our uh, final product that we we now sell um, but yeah it's even it's even finer than that we, we we sieve out all the little bits you might get a few goat hairs in there but apart from that it's all very very small stuff product video coming soon first goat poop layer complete so we've used, how many? Three small black tanks and a bigger red tank for one layer. Quite happy to see this. A lot of fungal activity already ongoing. What's brilliant about this particular layer is the biochar that's mixed in with the manure is already charged or inoculated, some people call it. So it's already got all the goodness locked into that and then it's it's ready it's ready to fire this this thing into life if you haven't got the luxury of having inoculated biochar like us just throw raw biochar in there and then by the time everything's composted down all the goodness is locked into your char and then you can use it straight onto your land of course what you can't do is put raw biochar straight on your land it needs to be inoculated the other thing that we we do is similar I suppose to what we do by keeping some compost to one side. I'm talking about finished compost and unions and that as the starter. 
It's the same sort of principle with our biochar. When I clean out underneath the goat house, I don't take absolutely everything out. I leave some there. I obviously don't know for sure, but I would imagine it speeds up the inoculation process. But more importantly than that, um, some microorganisms that may take a while to find your, your new char, it's already in there. You've not got to wait for that to, to migrate and, and take hold. You know, what, once it's in an area, um, if you've got enough char, it will just populate the whole lot. I can't do a lot else now till Toon comes back, apart from, like I said, go and get some more fresh hyacinth out of the drain. Uh, the good thing is that that will give it time for a little bit of water to, to drain off from the root system, so it's not quite so heavy for our, our bike to get it back here. Other than that, all I've got to do is rig up the hose and water the first lot of layers that I've done here. Uh, and then as we get more and more hyacinth, the di diameter will increase and it will get a lot, lot higher, far higher than me. Opinions may vary, but I think I've earned a cuppa. And uh, then I'll come out and let this rabble out. It's the end of the day, guys. I ain't got it finished. Uh, I've got some video footage for you on uh, why we didn't get it done. Hey, something's happening today that feels like it hasn't happened in an absolute age. It looks like we're finally gonna have another goat birth. Fingers crossed. There's tequila. It's her first pregnancy, so hopefully everything's gonna go right. I've just come back out here with the camera and got a few bits and bobs with me, but she's moved a little bit closer <laughs> to the lake than I'd like, so I'm gonna turn the camera off and get her somewhere a bit safer. She's still eating, and uh, we'll keep your posters as we go along. Very excited, very apprehensive, as you can imagine, after the uh, chain of events that we'd have had over the rainy season. So uh, let's just hope everything goes well. Well, true to form, with the way our luck's been going this, this last year, uh, we had a stillbirth, which is only the second one we've, we've had since we've been keeping the goats. Um, a little doling as, as well. Uh, she looked fine, just looked about three or four weeks, a little bit too early. The, the hair had started to form. You could see you know, she's brown head and white body. Just looked just a tiny bit too early. So there's absolutely umpteen reasons why a doe can miscarry uh, and have stillborns. Um, it could have been all the upheaval with what was going on. It could have been something as simple as a fight and then someone hit her. But, I don't know. Bugger. So, the uh, the hot shower will probably be lukewarm tonight. And uh, Toon's already drank her beer, so I don't know if she's going to shoot off and get another one. Uh, these things are sent to tries, as they say, don't they? Eh? Lots of others pregnant, and uh, yeah. we had noticed that tequila didn't, her udder hadn't filled up with milk. But sometimes a, a doe can start producing milk, sort of like you know, as, as the the kid is born. So although we're a little bit concerned and surprised that she'd gone into labour, we thought, oh well, mate, it wouldn't be the first time that that this sort of thing has happened or you know maybe she just didn't have any milk that would that would have been another possibility uh, we had that one time before so uh yeah never mind eh